Hello, this is Richard, Lord British Garriott, here to introduce Shroud of the Avatar Forsaken Virtues. This is the 90 Days In uh, demo or prototype we made for the Rooster Teeth Expo. Uh, as I noted there, we're only three months after the end of our Kickstarter where we've uh, taken the early prototype that we built with off-the-shelf tools and art, etc., and I'm now building the real games. We're three months into an 18-month schedule, uh, but we would like to uh, uh, show the community and everyone the uh, the game in progress as we're building it, but uh, please keep in mind uh, uh, the early state of uh, our evolution and as we uh, uh, and judge features appropriately, shall we say. But let us begin. When you uh, when we start in, in Shroud of the Avatar, we're going to start uh, outdoors uh, in the outdoor map, the overland map, and we're going to go off exploring for uh, adventure and resources, resources for crafting. As uh, everyone uh, who is familiar with our previous work in Ultima, you know how important to us the professions beyond adventuring are. Uh, so in this case, we're going to go off here into these woods. We're going to zoom down into a close-up view of those zooms. About a kilometer. Each of these zones is you know approximately a kilometer on a side. Uh, and now you can see we're running through the forest looking for some resources. In this case, I'm, a, I'm in search of some resources to build some furniture for my home. Along the way, I've run into this spider who's going to try to stop our path. Uh, and you'll notice that uh, the combat right now is in a very simple state. Uh, uh, we, but uh, the combat will become more sophisticated, of course, over, over time. Uh, it's just a simple stand toe-to-toe -to -toe and fight at the moment. But you may also have noticed that the amount of user interface uh, on screen now, or even during combat, is quite minimal. And that's one of our goals as a project, is to keep the viewport into the virtual world uh, as clean and uncluttered as possible. Uh, in this case, we've uh, found a suitable looking tree here that we might be able to harvest for some good hardwoods. Uh, sure enough, we get a few logs out of it and uh, we'll keep chopping on it and see what else we might, uh, how much we might be able to extract. Got another good uh, log from it. Here we are on our third time. And uh, look at there, that seems to have taken the tree down. So that's our indication that uh, uh, that's about as much resources as this particular tree is uh, going to give up uh, on this path. So uh, now we'll, we'll go back uh, to the outdoor map and uh, head back into town to see what we might be able to make with the resources we've just acquired. Stepped over to the village, zoomed down into the village. Uh, here we are above a, a little town called Owl's Head. If we look around, you may have heard a little buzzing sound. What was that? Ah, I see. It's a little Tesla tower uh, that is here in this town offering a bit of protection. Uh, so this is actually one of the relatively safe towns compared to some that are further afield. As we go through here, you'll notice the other NPCs are milling about and uh, uh, barking and uh, preparing for conversation. But here in front of our own house, you'll see a couple of crafting stations. This first station is a sawmill. And the sawmill, as you can see, can be used for a variety of purposes. If you put a log on the top of that uh, sawmill, it broke it down into uh, boards and dowels, uh, which might be useful for making things like uh, tables and chairs. Uh, you'll see that also if you put a board on it and use it, it breaks that board down into dowels. Uh, and depending on what resources you might need to build things out of, you would uh, set up that uh, crafting table differently. Right next to it, you can see we have the uh, carpenter's table. And on the carpenter's table, uh, it happens to be uh, well known that uh, to make a chair, uh, you could use a couple of boards and a handful of dowels, two boards in particular and four dowels in particular. And if you use that uh, crafting table, you can see we now have made a chair. Now let's go into our house and see if we might find a place we would like to set the chair. Um, here in the living room, you'll notice that fire pit we just walked past. That was actually one of the pieces made of art made for us by the community, in particular Harry Man, the guy that goes by Harry Man. Uh, he uh, submitted a lot of art that we are uh, very happy with and are bringing into the game now. Um, we're here on the second floor. There was, uh, uh, at least considering where we might have put the chair, the chair was green in areas it was legal to place and red in areas it was not legal to place. 
Uh, now we're up here on the roof. We might get a little good view of town and see what some of the other buildings are beginning to look like. Uh, see the smoke rising out of the chimneys of uh, my neighbors. And uh, in this case, let's set down the chair and uh, see if this, uh, how we like uh, sitting up here on the roof uh, in our freshly made chair. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with uh, Ultima history, uh, you know that in earlier Ultimas, I used to work very hard uh, to make people able to sit in chairs. Because in in when creating a highly detailed interactive virtual world, it was always a big deal to me is that all the props you would see were useful uh, in the way that you would expect them to be useful. And while in modern times it's not necessarily that difficult to allow people to sit in chairs, it was a hard-fought process back, back in those early days. So now that we've done a little bit of adventuring and we've uh, been building some chairs, let's head over to Fire Lotus's Tavern and find ourselves uh, a, a little bit to drink. Uh, and here you can see the bartender is welcoming us as the first patron of his day. And as you can see, we're typing to the bartender not via a menu system, but literally by typing English language um, phrases. In this case, I've introduced myself by name, and so he's going to now remember me by name. Uh, he told me what was on tap. I said I'll have a beer. He says he's going to bring down a new keg right now. Um, so, uh, in fact, I, at this point, I'm going to tell the bartender a little bit about what I've been doing. Say, hey, I've been making some chairs and got thirsty. And the bartender responds by saying, hey, you know, we could always use some comfortable chairs, uh, but not like that throne of bone that I've heard about. And so I can ask him, you know, what the heck is that? And he says, well, you know, we, I tend to hear things in this bar, and uh, there's a dungeon nearby. With it, uh, a recent tremor awoke some dark forces that were, were, were living within, and some of the villagers had gone there to explore it. And at that point, I can ask, you know, well, what did those villagers find when they explored it? And he says, look, you know, uh, those that survived uh, have spoken of... Uh, uh, skeletons uh, walking about an undead rising as well as a dark force that uh, has risen uh, that commands them uh, that, that often is seated on a throne of bone and uh, uh, I can of course say you know thank you very much for telling me that story and uh, say, and the bartender says look you know hey if you if you do something regarding that dungeon I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of people in this town will be very thankful but you'll notice the one thing that didn't happen here is that you were never told that something was explicitly a quest. There is no quest log. Uh, it is really up to you as a player to see what is happening in the game and make decisions about what you believe is important and what you believe you should do. So in this case, we're going to head out of town and head over to that nearby dungeon he was referring to. Here it is right next door. And uh, now we're going to step into the underworld and see what we find. Inside here you can see we've uh, entered into the dungeons, into a crypt-like setting. And we can begin to look here not only for the Throne of Bone, but for these walking uh, undead, uh, as well as maybe some treasure we might find in some of these crypts. You'll notice I can kick the skulls around on the ground, they're just some of our simple early physics objects. Uh, and I can often loot the skeletons or uh, crypts that I find along the way for supplies that I might be able to take back to town and sell or fix up for my own use. <coughs> As I explore a little farther, you can uh, see I'm still finding some treasure here and there. Aha, uh -huh, but I see in some of these side crypts the walls are being burst out and some of those skeletons are being delayed chase. Uh, but today, uh, instead of stopping to fight them, I uh, will try to see if we can make it through to the deeper recesses of this pit uh, and try to find the malevolent force that is driving this evil uh, and perhaps uh, recover that throne of bone to be put in my own home. As I proceed down, uh, in addition to the undead, you'll see there's plenty of spiders and spider webs and bodies laying about. Uh, but, uh, uh, but in addition to monsters to fight, uh, there are often puzzles to figure out as well. And here in this room, uh, across the room was a gate that won't be open, and I can't actually finish until I solve a bit of a puzzle here, but along the way I keep continue to find little bits of loot. And this puzzle is a puzzle about torches, where you have to turn all the blue torches to red. Each torch changed itself as well as its neighbors. Uh, in this case I knew the solution, so uh, I 
try to run through here to uh, get you as far in this uh, experience as possible. Another kind of puzzle here, the spike traps. I have to wait until the spikes go down before I can run across. Uh, there's a doorway here that was, uh, that was filled in that I can bust down, and that lets me into the final chamber here, where up on the top of that dais is the Grand Lich, who is in fact in charge of this uh, deadly place. Uh, I can run up here and have a little combat with him. Uh, again, this is still very early combat. Later on, he'll have, of course, much more sound effects, uh, the ability to cast magic, uh, be a much more interesting uh, combat, but uh, uh, what you begin to see is the beginning of uh, the way this would take place. And there, we finally dispatched him, the poor guy. He's uh, down for the count. And here, indeed, is the Throne of Bone, the item which I have sought, uh, which I can now sit and take over his domain or return to my home. Thank you very much.